What's going on people, welcome to 127 Works, and today I thought I'd go through a little guide showing how I finally managed to nail down the settings for my Oculus Quest 2, or Meta Quest 2 now, via the link cable to both play and record a set of Corsa. 1080p, 60fps for like recording videos for YouTube, and then for also a good smooth experience in the headset and have it not be laggy and choppy and stuff like that. So that's basically what the, the video is going to be, if that sounds interesting stick around, if not feel free to click away. So who's this video for? It's mostly going to be for people with a medium kind of range system spec. People with higher end specs might not necessarily have these troubles, uh, but people then with the lower end might not be able to pull off some of the things that I'm doing here as far as specific settings. I, for example, have a NVIDIA Strix, a, a NVIDIA ASUS Strix RTX 2060, not the super version, not the like overclocked or anything like that, just standard RTX 2060, the triple fan design from uh, ASUS, the, the Strix very Got a AMD Ryzen 2600X, not overclocked, it just does its standard turbo boost or whatever they call it, where it gets to 4.2 gigahertz when you're playing or putting put under load, but on the stock cooler, it, I've got 16 gigs of ballistics, I think crucial ballistics, ballistics crucial, whatever it is, RAM, and the game is installed on a hard drive, I don't even have it on SSD, so pretty mid-range system, like, you know, it's, it was pretty decent at the time when I built it, but it's pretty mid-range now, there's obviously 30s and 40s now, like, kind of pushing it down the, 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 down the line, but then there's also, like, people still rocking 9, 950s and 1050s and stuff like that, so somewhere solidly in the middle, so while the specific parts in your PC might not necessarily be the exact same ones I have, generally speaking, you can say, oh yeah, well, if I've got a 3050, it's maybe there may be enough there parity there where it might work or if you've got a 1080 standard non-TI version there might be close enough there but yeah there will be timestamps in the description so there's going to be basically three parts now of this little intro clip there's going to be part one which is setting up the oculus side of things or the meta side of things I, I always say oculus which is basically making sure your headset settings are correct in the oculus app making sure that the oculus debug tool settings are correct yeah anything along those lines basically making sure that you've got everything sorted part two is going to be the set of course setting specifically so that's going to be the base game your base game settings as far as just like render resolution and game quality and stuff like that but then also touching on my csp install settings just the basic the important ones like weather effects and graphic effects and stuff like that that i, that I use and then finally obs settings so again part of this video is explaining how to record in obs so if you want to get into the recording things and have it be smooth on the headset smooth on the screen getting good 1080p 60 fps videos that's that's what it's for so if you only need one part up the link will be in the description as i said um please feel free to check it out and if it helps you thumbs up is always appreciated but if not absolutely fine so let's get into it The first thing that you want to do is close everything that doesn't need to be open. And I know that can be kind of annoying because a lot of people like want to have YouTube or Discord or everything that open in the background. For my testing, when I was playing this last night and doing a bunch of testing over the course of like an hour or so, I closed everything that didn't need to be open. Not like not necessarily going into the taskbar and closing it, but I closed out of Firefox. I went into my taskbar and I closed down anything, any like little background clean or apps or something like that. Like anything that doesn't necessarily need to be open. Treat it like a console. Like that was the way I was thinking it. It's like when you're playing a game, obviously the advantage of playing on PC is that you can listen to the music and you can watch a YouTube video in the background all in the one device but just for purpose of, of testing it probably works absolutely fine with a couple of Firefox windows open uh, or Google Chrome windows whatever maybe and like you know your discord open and Spotify playing some music probably works absolutely the same they probably have such a negligent impact that it makes absolutely no difference but I happen to know that specifically Google Chrome and um, Firefox tend to hog a couple of gigs of RAM which you know if you've only got 16 or less that can that can make a difference in, in whether this is stable or not first thing that i did just to test it out was to close everything that didn't need to be closed as i said so with that said we switch over to the oculus app and now we have quest 2 and touch attached now this obviously isn't a complete from scratch guide i'm assuming you understand how to connect your headset to your with like via your cable and you know set it all up in the headset so you've actually got your oculus link working i'm not going into that level of detail it's basically assuming that you're like already using it anyway and you just want to optimize or you just want to get started with recording whatever it might be your quest 2 is attached via the link cable so what you want to do now is go in quest 2 and touch this is what i settled on and it's probably the most controversial part of the settings that that people might not be happy with 72 hertz absolutely works fine and you get a little bit more clarity by bumping up a little bit to the um to the recommended this like this this one here i prefer as like a little bit more frame rate than the extra than the tiny little bump in resolution and then 90 hertz obviously is ideal that's what you would like like ideally prefer and well obviously one to any you prefer but like realistically with the setup that we have 90 hertz is what you'd prefer but i just found that i couldn't reach it and i was dropping down into asw i was hitting 60s and 70s and it just wasn't this smooth experience whereas with this setup with this the sentence I'm going to be talking about now, I was able to stay locked at 80 hertz on the North Life for tourist section with custom shaders patch, with Sol enabled, with lights and all kind of stuff. So that's all I can say is that it's probably a controversial opinion to like lose that extra 10 to 10 FPS. But again, for me, a locked 80 is much better than an ASW 90 
which is actually only 4 to 5 obviously, or bouncing around between 60 and 70 that I've seen. And honestly the difference in resolution isn't, it just isn't that noticeable, like when it was at 72 and you bumped it up to here or a little bit higher, it was like that was, you might notice it, but the difference between somewhere like up here and up here is, is quite noticeable. So for me, yeah, it was, that, that, that was the, that was the kind of nice balance that I found between good visuals, nice smooth refresh rate and everything else, like the settings and all that I wanted in the actual game being what I wanted as far as quality in the actual game and what I was looking at. That's the first thing. The second one is your Oculus Debug tool. Now I have an entire specific video, it's actually my third video ever that's just passed 100,000 views this year. I have an entire specific video on this. Basically it's just the settings that you can set up here in the Debug tool that essentially guarantee that you're not putting through more data than your Oculus Quest 2 uh, link cable can handle. So if you've got the official one, you shouldn't need any of this. But I, for example, like as I said in that video, I will leave a link and a card somewhere in the description to um, to check out the video in full because it's important if you haven't done that step already to just make sure that you're not, if you're having any problems with your cable, I should say. But there is a potential that if you don't have this set up right, that you might be trying to force through more data than your third party cable can handle. And so you're getting stutteriness and choppiness in the headset. But again, I won't go into the details. For me, the number that I found that changed everything was 280 uh, mbps and you know just these settings here were kind of custom to mine as well 274 and low distortion curvature these are just a combination of things that i found that work the best it just means that when you're driving at high speed the image doesn't become all pixelated from the like as far as like the compression and stuff like that that you get when you're when you're using a usb cable obviously ideally you want to max out 500 but again with the hardware limitations that we have that's what i had to settle on so that is that again the full details if you don't know what i'm talking about here i'm i am purposely skipping over very generally because i do have a, as i said a whole specific video dedicated to this it's not a long video it's only a couple of minutes long just walking through how to fix it it's a timestamp in that one as well but yeah basically they're the settings to start off with that you want in your oculus in your oculus system kind of ecosystem to, to kind of get you started so we will be using 280 mbps we will be using 80 hertz and the re re resolution again to me to my eyes it looks absolutely fine in the headset it's not you know it's not 4k it's not crystal clear right either um but it's 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 close enough it's it looks absolutely fine and you're getting that smooth 80 fps as opposed to all the choppiness so that's it on to part two the set of course settings right so this is my set of course settings funny enough you can actually see proof that i wasn't guaranteed to get the 90 hertz because the last time that i did a bit of testing yesterday was the 90 hertz test didn't work and so as you can see there the average one was 86.9 which means that yeah it did stay fairly high but over the course of like a half a lap of the north while i was doing the testing it dropped and stuttered enough to me uh, to, to mean that the frame rates didn't stay at a solid night you can see there the average was 86.9 the minimum was 44.7 where we were hitting the asynchronous warp at asw and hitting 45 fps quite often so yeah as I said, these all work absolutely fine for 80 hertz, essentially. So again, you see, average, if your average frame is 80 and you're capping it off at 80 or 81, proof is in the pudding, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But yeah, these are basically the, the set of courses settings. So you've got render mode, Oculus Swift, full screen. All this is this kind of like full screen is important for um, recording because obviously you want to have the full screen. Custom resolution, I don't think I have that checked, but you know, just copy what we have here you want to limit the frame rate not necessarily that you want to but i just found maybe it was a placebo effect but i found like a long time ago when i used to test it i found that i was getting better performance when i limited the frame rate so you limit it to one over what you want i can't remember why you do that but you do it <laughs> like if you're aiming for 90 hertz and you want like you want a stable 90 hertz you set at 91 if you want a solid 78 hertz or whatever it might be instead of the 71 it's frame rate limited to 81 msaa you can push it to full 4a four times msaa obviously i've never bothered to be eight because it's experimental i don't want any issues with a buggy unfinished version or a feature of content manager anisotropic filtering 16x uh, royalty to hits the medium i looked through this little example thing and i know crowds the crowds in the background can be a bit performance hit so i was just like whatever gives me this green number and it, like high was still at like 1.83 percent compared to medium which isn't that drastic of a difference at all and look how much you're giving up like you're you're getting over a percent of performance hit difference there in the real world in the actual context of actually playing the game how much would you notice i don't know but i'm not spending the whole time looking at the map around me i'm focused on the next apex or the car beside me when i'm driving or the inside of my car or wherever it might be yeah the world detail is not super important shadow resolution again shadows can be a bit of a frame rate hit so i just set them on pretty low because again when you're flying through a track or when you're drifting as fast as you can sideways as you can backwards entries and all that stuff you're not looking at details of the shadows so yep don't particularly mind them smoke generation i have on minimum because i think think it's handled by extra heating in 
CSP. So your settings in here, I don't think actually matter that much. Reflections, it's an important one. It's a huge performance hit. So I've got it at 512 by 512. Don't put it at more than two faces per frame. That's a huge one. I can't remember what feature of CSP it is, but it does mention specifically that more than two faces per frame, your frame rate drops. So that's all I have there. And then post processing, you can enable it. Again, if you don't have the best system in the world, it can be a bit of a performance hit. I've got the standard Sol filter. Overall quality high, glare quality medium. I can't remember why that is. I don't think it's a massive difference, but anyway, that's that's what I have. Depth of field off, because why would you in VR? Motion blur off, because obviously. Saturation is fine. Heat trimming, never really noticed. The sun rays, I think they can be a bit performance here. FXAA not required. Mirror resolution, I just put at that. It's been it's never been an issue. Again, you're very rarely looking for too long in your mirrors, little glances here and there, so they don't need to be the highest resolution. Oculus pixels per display. This is basically super sampling within the actual program itself. So Across the board, I have super sampling at zero because again, the headset quality is pretty good. Headset resolution, matter I should say, is pretty good. There's no necessarily need. Like obviously, it's nice if you can have it, but I've just never found a net, uh, strictly a need to have any sort of super sampling either through Oculus Trade Tool, the debug tool, or the actual the, the games menu itself. So I've just never bothered with that system. These things again, you can just copy them. Not important. These are the base game settings that I found for getting the smoothest possible frame rates that, that I can, while still you know again looks are important. I can't drive around with, ja with jaggies. I can't drive around with no. AO. There's certain things that I look for that I, that I that I definitely need. Smooth frame rate and a clear image is, is, is the the biggest ones for me. And that's why with the four times MSAA, the resolution, the default resolution of the of the that we have it set at. in the Quest Two, it's more than enough for me personally. So these are the custom shaders patch settings. Uh, general patch settings. You know, if there's anything specifically changed here, I'll just scroll through them and you can see if anything seems different to you and you can pause it. But the most important ones for me are the extra effects. So I've disabled motion blur. I think that might be disabled by default. But I have disabled temporal anti-aliasing. Again. You could probably enable it, but for me, I don't notice enough of a difference. The headset, again, in the headset, everything looks fine to me. Local, uh, these are all active. Amb ambient occlusion is on. I've got an NVIDIA graphics card, so uh, HBAO Plus by NVIDIA. Have that on. Still getting fine frame rates and getting good HBAO. Graphic adjustments then. No AMD FSR. Now, I've tested this a lot. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks messing with FSR. Sometimes it works and gives me a good performance boost on certain in certain situations, and then just sometimes it just doesn't. So... I found it to be too inconsistent and again if I can get a solid 80 hertz on Nordschleife with the settings that I have not using it that's the preferred one because there is it's a, it's mostly stuff off at a distance like a light like a like a, the telephone pole when you come around one of the corners in a, on the Nordschleife or the Ferris wheel thing off in the distance when you come around the last the first corner the first turn where your lap starts they're just you can just definitely see like a little shimmering and it, like it loses a lot of the detail and I don't like that so yeah I've gone with AMD uh, FSR off but again if there's anything else here that I change I don't think so these are all not red red means that you've changed them from the base setting light and effects is active nothing changed here particle effects active these are all basically active enabled active rain rain effects that kind of thing. but the last one is weather effects and this one's kind of important because you will get performance issues if your controller script if you've got sol and csp and all that kind of stuff up to date sol 2.2 is the one that you want there's a couple of different options there's the base one but 2.2 is the most recent and then the weather script you want it to be sol again if you've got pure that's all well and good if you want to use different weather systems or whatever that's fine that's not what this is about, obviously, but I just found, again, Sol 2.2 and Sol for your controller and weather scripts. Like, you're going to have the least likelihood of anything crossing paths and causing performance issues, basically, because they're meant, they're built for each other, essentially. Oh, yeah, this is actually an important one that I tend to often forget about. Custom VR mirroring onto the main screen. You want that off. I've actually made another video about that as well in the past, because that will basically cut your frame rate in half. I made a video called Black Bears Be Gone or something like that. Basically, what that does is it projects onto the main screen a 4x3 square image with black bears on either side, but that is is very zoomed out if the FOV is crazy so you can see more technically but it's all horrible and FOV kind of fisheye lensy and there's black bars and as a result of the extra fisheye cramming more pixels in again it's hard to say these things because it looks crap and it runs off I don't know why it's enabled by default you want to turn that off essentially basically that that will just bring you back to a flat 1080p more cropped but you can still see everything that's going on as I turn my head if I'm looking around to the apex you can see that still clearly you can still see the wheel out the cockpit some on the roof, the sides, all that. The image on screen is absolutely fine. So yeah, it's a very strange one that that's chosen to uh, to, to, to be enabled by default. And then custom VR HUD rendering, not a performance thing, but on the flip side, it's disabled by default, and I really think it should be enabled by default. Long story short, because it's not terribly important to the video, but just while we're on it, again, I've also made a video about that. Full one, full video for that in the, script, in the cards, description, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Basically, you a first person come to a third person view in VR, it keeps all the menus here. 
as opposed to down in the cockpit. Again, you'll see the, exactly what it does in the, if you check out the full video, but just while we're, while, while we're on that subject, definitely recommend it, making that little tweak. But that's it as far as I know. They're the, they're the major things. Yeah, it's mostly, just, yeah, once you've got all this now, you should be good to go. The last thing then will be for recording. So we get on to the final, third and final chapter, which will be the OBS set specific. So this one had me pulling my hair out for a while because I really, I honestly thought, I was like, I don't understand because I can have NVIDIA Shadowplay record in like whatever massive max, like you can max that out at something like 250 megabits per second or something like that. But if I set it to 18 in OBS, I get choppiness in the recording. It was, it was very confusing. But using a combination of everything that I've shown you before and this basically next bit here, as I keep saying, I've gotten an absolutely smooth experience. So the main thing that you want is video for 1080p 60fps. You want to be 1080, 1920 by 1080, 1920 by 1080. Common FPS values 60. Obviously, you want a 60 FPS. That might just apply to streaming, but just in case, that's 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 what I have there. And then an output recording, I have the type standard recording path is my recording path. The recording format is MP4. Again, other people might use different formats. I find the quality for frame for file size of MP4 to be absolutely fine. There is that warning recording say to MP4 will be unrecoverable if it gets like you know if your power cuts out or blue split screen depth whatever that. It's a shame, but you know it's not terribly likely you can take the risk trying it with somewhere else but again for the purposes of the video that's what i run audio track one two three four five i use one because i don't mind having everything in the one audio track i've not experimented enough to work out having to have two so that's what I have. NVIDIA encoder NVENC HEVC. There is the NVENC H265 one, I think it is, or something like that. This is just the one that I have. I have an NVIDIA graphics card, as I keep saying. It uses the GPU to process the recording as opposed to the CPU. So that is why I use that. Rescale output not needed because it's down there in video. It's, we know that's putting out 1080p. But then the important part, which would be the encoder setting. So we've got CBR, constant bit rate, uh, a rate of 18,000 kbps, so 18 megabits per second. Essentially, it's the same, I'm pretty sure, that I use on my YouTube videos uh, when I'm rendering earned them in Premiere. Just the standard, looks absolutely fine. You know, no complaints. It's got good uh, bit rate, for, for lack of a better term, when you watch it on, video, on YouTube, like, you know, it's uh, even in racing games where, where things can get quite pixelated. Still looks absolutely fine. Keyframe interval, two seconds. Honest to God, don't necessarily know what that means. I've never seen it be an issue, but everywhere always recommends two seconds. Preset, slow, good quality. You want good quality. Tuning, high quality. You want it to be high. Multipass mode, two quality, or two passes rather. Again, these are just things that I found from Google. Profile to main, GPU zero, that's my 2060 if you had a second graphics card you could choose that one i guess to render the videos and max b frames too that is oh there's me hello <laughs> i'll go back to a set of course that is essentially everything that you would need if you've got a similar setup to mine as i said you don't necessarily have to have a 2060 it doesn't have to be the strict one if you do have a 2060 it doesn't have to be an md ryzen 2600x specifically but just of pcs roughly around this tier if you want the kind of experience that i'm getting and if you're okay with the 80 frames as opposed to 90 and you don't absolutely require the highest resolution if you're happy to be where we are with these setups like the mid tier getting good quality not the best but getting what you're paying for i said yeah i just I, I, as i said i tested it quite a bunch yesterday and i've i've really happy with the results solid 80 fps good resolution on the north life a, a big open track where there could be performance hits you might think which just you know leads me to believe that you've got maybe a little extra headroom there for a couple more cars on the track if you want to do a race or if you want to do um like you know a smaller track on silverstone or something like that or mons or whatever it might be you see what i mean like in theory if it's got if you're getting a solid 80 fps on the north life in theory you should be able to get a decent net like keep it a decent fps in other scenarios so that's about it uh, if you found it helpful please do leave a thumbs up subscribe for new here thanks for watching and goodbye